Is there many of them up to drink out there? Yes. When did Master Rock come home? Just now. Come here, Torva. Look what I have bought. No, no, don't disturb me. But did you say? All these things? Has my little Patrick been wasting on again? Come on, Torval. This is our first year of Christmas that we don't need it to economize anymore. Still, you know, we can't spend money endlessly. Can we just request about our money for this year, Torval? Because your new position will bring you lots and lots of money. Yes, after the new year. But then it will be a whole lot of life for the families do. I can't look forward to that. Laura, the same sweet little harder break. Suppose now I have borrowed 50 pounds today, and you have spent it all on the Christmas week, and then the New Year's Eve. It's killed me up and. Oh, don't say such horrid things, Torva. Suppose that happened, what then? If that were supposed to be happened, I don't care whether I owe money or not. That's like a woman. But. You know what I think? Remember, no debt, no borrowing. As you please, Torva. Come, come! My little scallop must not drop her wings. What is this? Is my little squirrel upset? What do you think I have got here? Money! There you are, there you are. Do you think I don't know what lot is one for housekeeping at Christmas time? One pound, two pounds. Thank you, Torval. This is will keep me for a long time. Indeed, it must. Come, come here and look at the gift that I have bought. What is this, Nora? Be careful, don't do that. This uh, is the new t-shirt for Eva. And this one? You can guess that one. I have no idea. You have really short mind, Torval. That's the new trumpet for Bob. And this one? And this one is for our sweet Emmy. I bought her a new dollhouse. Even though she's going really to pick them or I mean to broke them into pieces. But yeah, because this is all so cheap, then I can't help myself. And all this cute little mod, I bought it from the mall. And again, it's really cheap. And I think our aim really need this some for Christmas. Very well, very well. But you are a little person. What do you like for yourself? I... This is really hard question for what I have one. But... It must! Tell me something reasonable that you have to... particularly like to have. Oh, Torvald. Don't take me. Well... Mm -hmm. If you really want to give me something... Yes? Um... If you really, 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 really want to give me something... Well, I'll be dead. You might give me money, Torvald, only as much as you can afford. Nora, what are little people that... They are always wasting money. Spendthrifts, I know spendthrifts. You... But just give me the money, Torvald. No, no, Nora, indeed it is. But if you are really save out of money, I give you, then buy something for yourself. But actually, you just by unnecessary things, and then I really have to pay up again. Oh, but Torpa, you really have any idea how hard I'm trying to save the money? But Nora, you can't deny it. Just, I just can't believe how much expensive such a little person are. You shouldn't say that. I am really, really, really trying to save all I can. Oh, <laughs> very well, but you can't save anything. Actually, you can't save our money. But Torvald, you don't really have any idea how expensive this spotlight is going to have here. No, it's the blue. You can't inherit these things, Nora. Well, I wish I have money inherited from my father's quality then. Yes, I would not need to be anything, but just what you are. What, what shall I say? Are you honestly today? Do I? Yes, you do. But look at me. Alright, well. Hasn't Miss Swift been breaking rules in town today? No, what makes you think that? Hasn't she been to the confectioners? No, certainly not. Not been in Big Sweet? No, Torval. Not even taken a bite of cookies on two. I just saw you know. Yeah, Dad, I was only joking. Then if you're joking, I shouldn't against your wishes anymore. No, 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 I'm sure about that. Besides, you give me your word. No, right?
your Christmas secrets. It's better for all time. No doubt. Alright, but Tarpa, you should remember to invite Dad tonight. Oh, there is no need. But however, I just ordered some good wine for us. Nora, you don't think how oh, I'm looking forward to this evening? So am I and our children. We enjoy this evening. Mm -hmm. It's wonderful to feel that we have some perfectly safe job. It is delightful to think of, isn't it? Yes, it's wonderful. Oh, I have to go now. See you, Nora.
this time that he died, wasn't it? Oh, of course. Of school friends of my wife, I presume? 
Yeah, so we have not installed her since then. And just things, they just come here in order to see you. What do you mean? Uh, don't worry, Christian. You know, um, Christian is very clever and good at keeping, mm -hmm. and she is trying to work on the replacement to perfect herself. So that is why he came here to see you, Torvo. Oh, that would be possible. So you are a widow, Mrs. Lee? Yes. I think I found something for you. Look, Christine, this is going to be worse! You just come to write moment, Mrs. Lee. Why am I the temple? No, no, there is no need. But I'm sorry, I have to go now. Wait a minute, I will come with you. Are you going, Christine? Yes, I must go and look for a room. Don't be away too long, Torvald. For an hour, not more. Alright guys, because you guys have to come back this evening because we will have a good party. Bye! Excuse me, Miss Helmer. What do you want here? Oh, forgive me. The auto door was ajar. I suppose someone forgot to shut it. But my husband is going out, Mr. Coxstead. I know that. Then if you know that, what do you want here? A word with you. With me? You really want to speak with me? Yes, I do. But this is not the first of mine yet. No, it's Christmas Eve. And it will depend on you what sort of Christmas day you will spend. Today? Today it's impossible for me to think we of... We will not talk about that later on. This is something different. I presume you can give me a moment? I mean, yes, yeah, yes, I can. Good. Oh, so. Last night I was in Olsen's restaurant and I saw your husband going down the street. Yes, so what? With a lady. Yes, it's Miss Lynn. Just arrived in town. Yeah, today. She's a great friend, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, I know her too. Once upon a time. I'm aware of that, Mr. Coaster. Are you? So you know all about it. I thought as much. Then I can ask you without beating about the bush. Is Miss Lynn to have a job in the bank? Who are you to ask such a question like that, Mr. Coaster? Okay, since you ask this, let me explain to you. Mrs. Lynn, a friend of mine, we will have a job at the same bank with my husband. I was right in what I thought then. Listen, Mr. Kongstad. Someone should have a tiny little bit of influence. But when it's a woman, it doesn't necessarily follow that. When someone who has influence, then you should to avoid offending of someone who have... Who have... Who has influence. Yes, exactly. That's what I mean, influence. Miss Elmer, you will kindly of see that you will use your influence on our behalf. Wait, what? What do you mean about that? You will kindly see that I am alone to keep my subordinate position in the back. What do you mean? Who's supposed to take positions away for you? Oh, there is no necessity to keep up the pretense of ignorance. I am quite understand your, your friend is not very anxious to expose herself do the chance of rubbing herself, her rubbing shoulders with me. And I quite understand too that whom I have thanked for being turned off. But I assure you it was very person. likely. But to come to the point, the time has come when I shall advise you to use your influence to prevent that. I don't have any influence. Haven't you? I thought you said yourself just now. I didn't mean you to put that on construction. I I why do you think that I have such kind of influence with my husband? Oh, I have known your husband from our student days. Um, I don't suppose your husband is any more unassailable like any other husbands. Look, Mr. Coxstack, if you speak slightly about my husband, I think I should get you out of the house. You are both, Miss Helmer. I don't care. When the new year comes, I will be free of all of these things. Listen to me, Miss Helmer. If necessary, I would like to fight for my small job in the bank as if I was fighting for my life. So it seems. It's not only for the sake of the money. As a matter of fact, 
the matter lives with me in the matter. There's another reason. Like, you know, my position is this. And I dare say you know, like everybody else. Many years ago, I was guilty of an indiscretion. Yes, I think I've heard some of that part. The matter never came into court. But every way seemed to be close to me after that. So I took to the business that you know of. But because I must do something to do. But honestly, I don't think I am I have been one of the worst. But I have to cut myself free from all that. My sons are growing up and for their sake I must try and win back as much respect as I can in this town. This position is like the very first step up for me and your husband was going to kick me downstairs again into the mud. Listen here, Miss It's not my power to hate you at all. Then it is because you have the will. But I have means to compel you. So you mean that you will tell my husband about the money that I owe you? Hmm. Suppose I were to tell him. That was very famous of you. How could you be such a terrible person that would tell my husband? Can you imagine my pride and my job? When you tell my husband, it will put me in such a ugly and clumsy way. And you know that put me into position of disagreeable and I can imagine of that kind of position, Mr. Klausner. Only disagreeable. Listen to me, Miss Helmer. Either you have a very bad memory or you know very little of business. I think I should remind you some of a few details. What do you mean? When your husband was ill, you came to me and borrowed 250 pounds. Here's the problem, Mrs. Larson. It's just because there's no anyone else to go. Yeah, and I promised to get you that amount. Yes, and you did so. Yep, I promised to get you that amount on a certain condition. Back then, your mind was so taken up with your husband's illness and you were very anxious to get the money for your journey. That makes you seem to not pay attention to the condition of our day. Therefore, I must remind you that I promised to get the money on a security of a bond which I grew up. Yes, which I signed. Yes, good. And below your signature, there is a few lines pasted to your father on a shorty for the money. Those lines your father should have signed. Should? He did sign them, Mr. Costa. I had left the date blank, which means your father must himself inserted the date on which he signed the paper. Do you remember that? Yes, I think I remember that. Yes, and I gave you the bond to send by post to your father. Isn't that so? Yes. And you did so at once because five or six days afterwards, you came to me and brought me the bond with your father's signature. And then I gave you the money. Well, haven't I been paying off regularly? Yes, very regularly. But to come to the matter in hand, that must very trying time for you, Miss Helmer. He was very near of his death, Mr. Foster. Yeah, um, your father was very ill, wasn't he? Yes. And died soon afterwards. Yes. So, tell me, Miss Helmer, can you by any chance remember what day your father died? I mean, what day of the month? As long as you remember, father died at 29th of September. That is correct. So, there is a discrepancy which I cannot account for. What discrepancy? I don't know. The discrepancy consists, Miss Helmer, in the fact that your father signed this, signed this paper three days after his death. What do you mean? I don't understand all of this. Things. Just have no words across that. Miss Helmer, your father died on the 29th of September. But look here, your father has dated his signature the 2nd of October. It is a discrepancy, is 
isn't it? Can you explain it to me? <laughs> and it is a remarkable thing to know that the word 2nd of October as well as the year are not written in your father's handwriting, handwriting but in one that I think I know. Well, of course it can be explained that maybe your father have forgotten to date his signature and someone else may have dated it before they know that your father had died. But there is no harm in that. It all depends on the signature of the name. And that is genuine, I suppose, Miss Helmer. It was your father himself who signed his name here? No, it was I who wrote father's name. Are you aware that was a very dangerous confession? In what way? In what way, Mr. Colstead? Did you know that? Okay, yeah. ah, let me ask you a question. Why did you not send the paper to your father? Let me explain this to you, Mr. Colstead. If you ask me why I don't send this to my father, can you imagine when I ask my father for the signature, he will ask me what the money is used for? And how can I tell my my father about my condition of my husband when my father is very near of his death. It would have been better for you if you had given up your trip abroad. No, it's impossible, Mr. Kostad. The trip is proposed to save my husband's life. But did it never occur to your mind that you're committing a fraud on me? Listen, Mr. Kostad, I don't take that as an account. And I didn't trouble myself for you at all even though you knew what condition that my husband was suffered in. Miss Helmer, you evidently realize that what it is that you have been guilty of. But I can assure you that my one last step, one false step, which makes me lost all of my reputation, was nothing more or nothing worse than what you have done. You? Do you ask me to believe that you were brave enough to ruin your life to save your life? Law cares nothing about money. Say it will be foolish law. Foolish or not, it is the law by which you will be judged. If I produce this paper in the court. I don't believe that. Is that a doctor cannot save her father's life? Or is that a wife cannot save her husband's life? If you have a knowledge in this kind of situation, Mrs. Kostad, I believe that even even though you say there is no kind of law that permitting in this such condition, but I believe there must be one. But here it is, the fact you don't have any knowledge of that law, then I can assure you that you will be very poor lawyer, Mr. Kostad. Maybe, but matters of business, such business as you and I have had. Don't you think I don't understand that? Very well, do as you please, but let me tell you this. If I lose my position for the second time, you shall lose yours with me. Excuse me. What a nonsense. No, 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 he's just freaking like that. It's just not going to be happening, it's just so impossible. You'll never find me like that, Mr. Foxton.